I'm Wolf Blitzer in CNN's command center for breaking news, politics, and extraordinary reports from around the world. You're in the Situation Room. Uh, in less than uh, 24 hours, killing sprees in two American cities. Uh, why did the attackers do it? How could they be stopped? Uh, we're going to get some answers. And was religious intolerance behind the massacre at Fort Hood? I'll speak with a Muslim, a veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces, who wants American Muslims to speak out more assertively. Rather than victimology, rather than just condemning something, say, you know what? We are not only going to celebrate American Armed Forces, but we're going to show that the ideology of Americanism, which separates mosque and state or church and state, is exactly why we're here. Fort Hood uh, Rampage suspect, uh, the psychiatrist uh, Major Nidal Hassan, is uh, one of just uh, under 2,000 Muslims in the U.S. Army right now, that according to Army statistics. So what will his alleged actions mean for them? And joining us now, Dr. Zudi Jasser. He's a former U.S. Navy physician, a lieutenant commander in the Navy, now retired. Joining us from Phoenix, uh, Dr. Jasser is the founder of a group called the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Dr. Jasser, thanks very much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Will. Uh, I know you're a devout Muslim. How worried are you about the potential backlash over what happened at Fort Hood affecting other U.S. military personnel who are Muslim? Well, I think it's important that we, you know, as we see more of these happening on week to week, it's, it's, it's repeatedly unending now. We, I'm concerned, and I think it's important now for the Muslim community to start to say that, you know what, we need to show that we're leading the fight against this so that we can stop the ideologies that create individuals like this. And I've never met a Muslim that would do such a thing, but I certainly believe it's time for us to start to creating a reform movement that stops the ideologies that influence people like this doctor. There were reports uh, that uh, uh, the Dr. Hassan, uh, Major Hassan, uh, the suspect in this case, was taunted because of his Muslim uh, religion. Uh, did you ever experience anything like that in the Navy? You know, I served 11 years. I've ne always felt unit cohesion. I never once felt that I was uh, ostracized or my faith in any way played any role. I served with uh, Mormons, Christians, Jews. Uh, Buddhist, it was a, a, a representative of why my parents came to this country. The reason I joined the Navy was my parents told me that I could practice my faith more freely in America than I could anywhere else. And that's why these shootings were just horrific for me as a Muslim and as a physician who trained at Bethesda because, you know, you see this guy and you go, what happened? When, how could we have prevented this? It, it just hit too close to home. Do uh, you believe that the military does enough to make sure there isn't this kind of uh, taunting going on? Absolutely. I can tell you, you know, when I, I joined my ship when they were returning from uh, uh, Operation Restore Hope and they were going to have uh, sort of a celebration and uh, the CO knew that I was of Arabic origin when I joined them and he made sure that none of that happened. And, and I'll tell you, I think that the military goes way beyond what they should. They, they make sure that there is unit cohesion. And, uh, you know, now in a post 9-11 environment, I'm sure that may have changed a bit as far as the pressure on that. But uh, the military is a representation of the rest of America. And I think there's no more tolerant, pluralistic country than our, than our nation. I know your family, your parents immigrated from Syria to the United States. Uh, how, when you say you're worried about a backlash, what needs to be done to make sure that U.S. military personnel who are Muslim aren't, uh, are, aren't affected negatively by this? I think it's important, you know, one of the things we do when I speak at the Joint Staff College in Norfolk or I've spoken to Fort Benning and other places, one of the things that's important is I convey the message that if we're going to prevent future Dr. Hassan's or Malik's in the future, the source of, of solution is going to come from Muslims, from devout, conservative, family-oriented Muslims like my family that are going to teach about the separation of mosque and state, to teach that uh, countries like America that have a constitution that's pluralistic and not theocratic are where we can truly be free Muslims. And as we start to see that that's the solution, we will realize that Muslims are our greatest asset and thus a backlash will not happen because America will realize that homeland security is intimately related to a vibrant, connected, frontline Muslim community. What I hear you saying, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Jasser, is you want uh, the American Muslim leadership, the American Arab leadership to be more outspoken and to take a more assertive stance in, uh, in, in making these points that you're making. Is that right? 
Absolutely. Rather than victimology, rather than just condemning something, say, you know what? We are not only going to celebrate American armed forces, but we're going to show that the ideology of Americanism, which separates mosque and state or church and state, is exactly why we're here and work against global movements like the Muslim Brotherhood and political Islamist movements that have a cyber jihad that is feeding the minds of Salafists and oriented Muslims like the radicals that will end up showing Americans that truly we are on the side of freedom and liberty and not on the side of, of political Islam and radicalism. There is one report out there that Major Hassan, uh, who was about to be deployed to Afghanistan, didn't want to go to Afghanistan and fight and potentially kill fellow Muslims. In your experience with your fellow Muslims in the military, did you ever come across a fear like that? Absolutely not. You know, I joined the military because I swore to uphold an oath to the Constitution and as, my, as an officer, and I never had a conflict between being Muslim and being an American because that is the concept of the Islamic State that I never adhered to, my parents never taught me, and I was first an American citizen because I could be free to have a relationship with God, and I never had that conflict. Certainly there is Muslims out there that do have that conflict, and we need to work to reform that concept of the theocratic Islamic State that is in conflict with American uh, citizenship. Dr. Jasser, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you for having me, Walt.